I don't get to have a nice introduction from anyone. Uh, so, just to say, I'm Peter Whittle, and I'm founder and director of the New Cross Family. Let's not be confusing. Oh. Um, ladies and gentlemen, if the title of our conference this year, State of Emergency, appears somewhat stark, it is because that's how we see it, the New Culture Forum. Our country now exists in a state of emergency. The decline and decay is all around us. Millions of us have been have been reduced to observers watching as the ground beneath our feet visibly gives way. There is an increasing and widespread realization that our political and cultural elites work continuously against our interests. There is no longer even the pretense that the views and beliefs of the majority of us are valued. Indeed, they are actively ignored or demonised. Free speech in Britain is now just a term. No wonder that that everyday saying that you always used to hear, it's a free country, has virtually disappeared. We have a governing class that is riven with incompetence, cowardice and a complete inability to acknowledge the enormity of the problems which face us. Now, the mainstream media increasingly acts, I think you'd agree, as merely the carrier of the acceptable political message, a kind of visual display unit for the political and cultural establishment. Our inst institutions have been captured after decades of a long march through them. Our schools indoctrinate our children. Our universities have become purveyors of hard left woke ideology and the unashamed enemies of free speech. And our police, having withdrawn almost entirely from the public space, enforce parts of the law and ignore others. Many of us have been appalled, especially over the past six months of these demonstrations, by the blatant double standards on show. The truth is, ladies and gentlemen, that the police are no longer our police. The civil service regularly thwarts elected governments and promotes ideological causes. Our museums, our cultural institutions and national organisations dedicate themselves to deconstructing our history and our heritage in the process delegitimising the very point of their existence. And the very language that we speak has been hijacked. Demographic change through mass immigration on an historically unprecedented scale has undermined our collective memory and our sense even of ourselves. It has dangerously weakened the social contract between government and people to the point of collapse. We have effectively been hollowed out from the inside. Now, all around us, we see a kind of apparent apathy, a response to the all-pervading demoralisation we continue to experience. Now, the sense of powerlessness and despair which characterises this country now is, I think, a very valid response, not just to these issues I've outlined above. It is a product, too, of our very specific experiences over the past decade. Because, let's face it, we have certainly had a rough time of it. The reaction of our political, academic, business and media elites 
to the 2016 Brexit vote came as a shock to even the most cynical. The attempt to thwart the will of the people led many to the conclusion, including me, that our institutions were perhaps not what we thought they were. The spectacle of a democratically delivered decision being challenged and possibly changed and possibly thwarted changed forever many people's attitudes to their own institutions. Now, this was followed by the official response to the COVID pandemic, one that did untold damage and which week by week is increasingly discredited. Isn't it funny that we no longer even seem to speak about lockdown? It's almost as though they're ashamed of what they did. And at the height of this in 2020, when the country was perhaps at its most powerless, we witnessed a full-scale assault on our history and heritage in the aftermath of the death of George Floyd in the US and the Black Lives Matters protest. Now, coming seemingly out of the blue, the attack was delivered just as intensively, perhaps more so, from within our own institutions as from anything outside. And it left many of us reeling in bewilderment. But, and I believe this is crucial, the despair I describe should not be taken as a form of resignation or indeed of an acceptance of the situation because nothing could be further from the truth. The overwhelming majority of the public, what I would call the silenced majority, care deeply, still, about this country and its future. They value its history. They are proud of its heritage. This is despite years, decades indeed, of them being told that what they hold dear is not just valueless, but actively wrong. That they are not who they thought they were. That in fact, they are the cause of most of the bad things in the world that they simply have the wrong views, the wrong feelings and beliefs, and that it's only right and proper that therefore they should be excluded from the national conversation. Well, the New Culture Forum is, always has been, and always will be on their side. We recognise now that the only meaningful fight in Britain is between the elites and the people. Now, it won't have escaped your notice that anybody who expresses the concerns of millions or who even puts a different view to the acceptable opinions is increasingly labelled far right, an extremist. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'll tell you what extremism is. Saying that women can have penises is extremist. <laughs> Giving a child puberty blockers is extremist. Creating so many hate laws that 70% of people fear speaking their minds in public is extremist. Doing nothing, doing nothing, when a teacher is forced into permanent hiding for showing his pupils cartoons of Mohammed, that's extremist. Spending millions on housing illegal migrants while our own veterans sleep rough, that's extremist. Standing by while hostile demonstrators defile our monuments while arresting those who carry a union flag, that's extremist. <laughs> Allowing annual net migration of 750,000 a year against the repeated and stated against wishes of the public. Now that is extremist.
We are not the extremists. In fact, we are the true voices of moderation. But after years of having a revolution imposed on us from above, our patience has run out. Now, the NCF is not a political party, but we can certainly lay increasing claim to being a movement. Our growing network of local NCF groups around the country, some of whom we will hear from this afternoon, is testament to that. Now, in our most recent publication, we set out 10 clear and simple actions which we believe are needed to save Britain. And they amount to our manifesto. I will go through them. They should come up here, too. One, there must be a permanent and complete end to mass immigration. And this must start with a total freeze on all further migration for a certain period. <laughs> the United Kingdom must withdraw from the European Convention of Human Rights. The Equality Act must be abolished. The thorough, balanced history of Britain and its achievements, as outlined by Rafe earlier, must be taught to every pupil in every school until the age of 16. It must be stated unequivocally that there is no blasphemy law in this country and that any attempt <laughs> that any attempt to establish a de facto one will be actively prevented by the government. The concepts in law of hate and harmful speech must be scrapped. There must be a complete ban on the teaching, as though it were fact, of critical race theory, gender ideology, and all associated ideologies in schools across the country. <laughs> there must be a ban on compulsory attendance at so-called diversity, equity, and inclusion courses, and unbiased Un unconscious bias sessions. I don't know how many of you have experienced those yet, but uh, all public funding of them should end. All institutions and quangos, including pu publicly funded broadcasters, which stray from their core purpose of priori by prioritising ideology instead, must be challenged and, if possible, lose their funding. <laughs> Finally, those bodies, which instead of promoting Britain and caring for its history and heritage, actually undermine it, and it happens on a daily basis now, should be replaced either with another, which does do the job, or all public funding should be withdrawn. I think those were all very moderate. Now, next year, there will be a general election. We will be putting our pledges to all the candidates standing right across the country. By doing this, we will be able to ascertain where those who seek to represent us truly stand on these crucial issues for the future of our country. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, over the past six months, we have seen regular large-scale demonstrations in London and throughout the country. The extremism displayed, the hostility, the intimidation exhibited by many of the protesters have led many to feel that they no longer recognise this country. Certainly, the response of the BBC and the police amongst our other institutions, have been shameful. Now, taken together, these reactions of those institutions and of the demonstrators have opened the eyes of many 
to the problems we face in Britain. Now, this is a good thing. It's palpable. A wider public has seen vividly and inescapably that there are now in Britain large numbers of people who, far from integrating, actively hate this country and make no pretense even at sharing its values. However, whether it be Islamic fundamentalism or critical race theory or trans activism or environmental activism, it is crucial that people understand, and this is crucial, that the basic motives behind all of them are the same, and that is an ingrained hatred of our culture and Western civilization and a desire to overturn them. Now, these problems of which I speak are huge, but they simply cannot be allowed, they cannot be allowed to be insurmountable. Those who look at the accelerating decline of our country and are aghast are, I believe, as is evidenced by this very response, the very spine of this nation. And that includes you and me, I believe, that spine is still there even as it is attacked by all the malignant surrounding organs of the body politic. The spine remains. Some people say what good is just talking about all this. Well, to that I would say we have a duty to talk about it. Because by talking about it, we are letting those who rule us and who control our institutions know that we know that despite the elaborate narratives and the edifice which they've created and which they maintain, we know the reality of what they have done. That by associating together in increasing numbers, that we are bound by a strong emotion, a love of country, one which they could never, ever understand. Ladies and gentlemen, we must keep our faith in ourselves and our belief in Britain, because indeed, they are in fact one and the same thing. And I know that eventually, it will be us who will be shown to be on the right side of history. Thank you very much. Hello. If you're enjoying the New Culture Forum channel and you believe in our mission, may I invite you to join our membership scheme at the link below or on our website, newcultureforum.org.uk. Our work is more important now than ever and we have great plans ahead for the future, but we can't do it without your support. From as little as £3 per month, you can help ensure that we continue on our mission. As a member, you'll receive a range of benefits, including access to exclusive content, invitations to our private events, including here at our studios, free copies of our books, and much, much more, including, of course, our famous NCF mug. If you aren't able to become a member, then please help us by clicking this button and subscribing to our channel. It's completely free. Just remember, to also click the bell icon so that you can get notifications when we post new videos. Thank you.